Look, I'm sitting here trying to look comfortable on a couch. I'm clearly not with it. Got bad lighting. This could only mean one thing. It's Friday rant time. Look, I'm not gonna lie. Today's actually been a really good day. Very productive. It's a nice day outside. I'm happy. This is a comfortable couch. I never sit here. But that doesn't mean someone doesn't have to rant. Now today, I'm gonna take a different approach to this. I learned from a second grader the other day that sometimes you just gotta build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> and that's exactly what I plan on doing today. Now I did a rant against CPAP manufacturers and those that agree and support the notion that patients have no business accessing their data. Here, I'll go ahead and play that for you. I openly beg for you, the people that openly disagree with what I'm saying right here, please post something in the comment section down below. I'm dying for it. I want people to see the absolute convoluted logic that you guys use as to why you don't share data. I want your pompous attitude to come through your writing like it always does. More often what we do is not rocket science, so let's, let's just stop acting like it is. I understand, you're an RT, you took a couple classes. We're all impressed inside. Now to me, this seems pretty clear that I simply called out the CPAP manufacturers for hiding the data, go ahead and share it with people, and also called out people who agree with it. Now I did call out respiratory therapists, but the reason is respiratory therapists are the gatekeepers when it comes to a lot of this information. Respiratory therapists are the ones that are licensed to dispense CPAP equipment and CPAP masks. You have to have respiratory therapists on staff. And because of this, they are the gatekeepers. They're the ones that scold you if you look at your data, they're the ones that scold you if you change your pressure. So yeah, I called out respiratory therapists, but only those that choose to hide your information from you at all costs and don't listen to you and don't actually solve your problems. We had one of these respiratory therapists out themselves. And I thank them for it. Now, I'm not going to share their name. I'm going to block it out. And I, if you guys know where the comment is, I appreciate the comments you've done. You guys haven't slammed them at all. You've just kind of experienced that, hey, look, this Oscar works for me. I have the data. It's improved my sleep. It's improved my life. Respiratory therapists didn't do so much. My doctor, the DME, no one really helped me. Oscar helped me. Your videos helped me. So let's go ahead and go through this one by one. I had someone actually ask for it. Give the answers. Give the answers. Here we go. Building bridges. The respiratory therapists are too busy setting up CPAPs for the companies they work for than to do appropriate CPAP follow-up with a patitense. That seems kind of sexist. And it is through no fault of their own. I kind of tend to agree with that, kind of. But at the same time, you're seeing the patients. You can say, hey, look up Oscar. Here's where you find it and download it. It'll give you access to your information. It doesn't really take much. Hey, if you have a dry mouth, you might have a mouth leaking problem. How long did that take me? I don't think that's going to impact the schedule so much, but I digress. Apria, Lincare, American Home Patient, and thousands of others employ respiratory therapists and control our schedules. Control. Yeah, I mean, but, but you, you can share information pretty quickly. It doesn't mean you can't answer their questions, right? I used to deliver CPAPs to patients' home and educate them, and it pissed me off that I was never given time by the company to follow up with patients. Okay, but what's preventing you from sharing the information preemptively before you walk away? You can give them information about data, data sharing, where to find it, Oscar, but that's not really the point of this. You're kind of arguing something else. The whole point of it was calling out people who agree with hiding the data. Now you're saying you wanna do good follow-ups with them, but that's not what I was complaining about in the first place. It was the hiding of data and patients not being able to look at their data. That's what we're actually arguing here. So stop blaming us. Furthermore, respiratory ta therapists take more than a couple of classes and have either an associate's, bachelor's, and a few have master's degrees. Yeah, they do have uh, a lot of classes. There's a lot of stuff with respiratory therapy I don't understand at all. There's a very, very small portion that overlaps into sleep, sleep disorders. And what we find is in the sleep lab, when you hire respiratory therapists, they actually know really very little about sleep disorders, like very little. So you have to train them on the job as well. Even though they do have a lot of training on other things, like I said, I don't understand. I don't know anything about that. But when they cross over into sleep, they're mildly honk. And also I wasn't really blaming you. You kind of outed yourself. You're the one that sounds like you're defending the hiding of data. Again, that's, that's the issue here. Accessible data for the patients if they want it. Polysomnographers take about two to three classes for their education. Actually, I didn't take any. Probably a bad time to admit this. Insert nasty. Ignorant, uneducated clap here. Now I gotta make fun of myself for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uninspired. I'll let you guys make fun of me in the comments section. Please leave your uneducated, ignorant clap about me and, and other polysomnographers down in the comment section down below. 
Clap me. Furthermore, you really shouldn't legally and ethically be adjusting CPAP or bi-level nor ASV machines even during a titration study without medical credentials. Legally, registered polysomnographic technologists are able to do it. That's kind of why we're regulated by the state medical board. And we also have our own credentials from the BRPT, which is a board of registered polysomnographic technologists. So legally, but what about ethically? Ethically, I'm not really sure where ethics come into this, but I know like as far as patients who are suffering and struggling at home because they were put on the wrong CPAP pressure, I think ethically, don't you have to do something to help them out so they're not struggling on too low a pressure or too high a pressure? Now, I know I personally have seen this hundreds, if not thousands of times throughout my career, my uneducated career. So I feel like ethically, I do have to help them out and I do have to help them adjust the pressure appropriately. You wouldn't come into a hospital and adjust a CPAP by level. So why are you doing it in an office? It's still wrong and still unethical. I mean, it's kind of part of my job, so I wouldn't say it's wrong. And again, unethical, if you're helping the patient, isn't it ethical? If you're taking the time to look at their data and see what their specific problem is, kind of seems like it's unethical not to. Most polysomnographers were trained on the job and have absolutely no medical background or have an associate degree with barely any training on titration studies for CPAP therapy. Yeah, I think a lot were trained on the job. I know I was trained on the job. Uh, I know I personally have medical background as do a lot of the ones I know. A lot of them have medical background, a lot of MAs. Um, I do know a dude that's like a electrician that did it. Some other lady worked in an allergy lab. She was pretty good though. Another lady I know, she's actually a doctor, but from a foreign country that didn't translate so well. So she became a sleep tech. I personally had a bachelor's degree in sport and exercise science, which I used as an exercise therapist in a physical therapy department before I transferred into polysomnography. That's kind of a medical background. I don't know. I feel okay. And before you can become an RPSGT, you have to have quite a bit of on the job training. It's not just a couple nights. It's actually quite a long time. Then you have to pass the board registry and get credentials from the state medical board. The NBRC, the National Board of Respiratory Care, really needs to make it mandatory that, that polysomnographers have a respiratory therapist background. I think I'll write them and suggest that. If we have a respiratory therapist background, don't you think we would be respiratory therapists? I think I'll write them and suggest that. So like I said before, the NBRC has no jurisdiction over polysomnographers. We have a completely different board that oversees us, but it usually is the same state medical board that hands out credentials and licensures for the state. I think I'll write them and suggest that. I mean, I guess you could do that, but it's kind of like when people say they're going to call the Better Business Bureau on a company that isn't even a member of the Better Business Bureau, but go for it, I guess. For a profession that only takes two to three classes, we're doing a hell of a job on the front line. What are you doing? As far as on the front line, I don't know what you're talking about in general, but as far as sleep, sleep apnea, sleep disorders, treatment, mostly not doing a great job as far as patient education. And I'm not saying it's your fault. It's the company's fault, but you guys are often going along with it. Again, that's not the argument here. The argument is why are you against data sharing and the sharing of data with patients? Why do you not want them to have it? That's what you responded to. I thought we gotcha. So that's really all we're arguing. Those that agree with CPAP companies on hiding the data from patients. Why do you not want them to see the overall leak data, the breath by breath data throughout the night? Why do you want to hide that data and make it very difficult to access? That's the argument here, nothing else. And then what are you doing? Um, this, I'm showing patients how to access their data and I'm trying to make sure that they're on the correct pressure. I'm also putting out educational videos. You can check them out down below. This is a great time to mention, like and subscribe and share my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. People don't need a sleep study in a lab to get a CPAP. They can do a home sleep test at home in their own bed and not waste money in a sleep lab with some sleep tech who probably worked at a gas station six months prior to doing a sleep study and still get a CPAP. That's true, you don't need to go into a sleep lab to get CPAP. Home sleep tests are actually widely used now. You're right. I personally don't know of any sleep tech that has worked at a gas station six months prior though. Like I said, electrician, he's pretty good though. Like I said, he's pretty good. If the person needs a titration because their sleep apnea is bad, very high AHI, and or they have central sleep apnea, they can see their sleep medicine doctor for a proper titration study to get the correct settings on their CPAP. Wait, weren't you just making fun of them going back to a sleep lab for the gas station sleep tech? Why are you sending them back there now? This is the logic I'm talking about. If you don't think that sleep techs do a good job in the sleep lab, why would you send a patient there for a titration, for a proper one? What makes this one proper over the other one that's not proper? I don't understand. I'm confused. Respiratory therapists don't control this data. The companies do. Since when do you think an RT can freely release company information, especially when it's unknown to them? I never said they could. I know it's the companies. 
but RTs are the gatekeepers. You're the one arguing on their behalf, unless you want patients to have access to their information, but you're the one that wrote this long thing. It seems like you're arguing for patients to not have access to their data. It does sound like you're gatekeeping the information by what you're sh willing to share with people. RTs are given patients to set up on CPAPs like it's an assembly line completely out of their control. Like I said, mentioning certain websites where they can find the information or check out sleepfiles.com forward slash Oscar, that doesn't really take that long. You can mention online forums. Though the information's not 100% perfect, at least it's gonna give them some direction and some answers if they're willing to look for it. All patients aren't gonna look for it and seek it out, but the ones that are are gonna be much better off for it. No one, RTs, wants to go to patient homes right now with COVID. Why don't you go since you're so smart? Yeah, I was actually just at a patient home the other day. I don't know what that has to do with my intelligence, though. My bachelor's degree, my on-the-job training, my gas station attendance. <laughs> so I didn't really have a rant. This was a rant by an RT. Now, am I blaming RTs for any of this? No, most of that's just joking around. Like I said, I have a lot of friends that are RTs. What I railed against is the system and the way it's set up to hide data from patients. Why are these companies encrypting the data on their CPAP machines now? Why? What's the reason for it? That wasn't much of a rant. Hopefully we build some bridges. I don't think this RT that wrote this is a bad person. I just think they don't understand fully what's going on here. Why are we hiding data from the patients? Do you or do you not support that? Do you think patients are too dumb to deal with their own information? I don't think they are. I think they're highly capable of it. And I think the gatekeeping needs to end. God bless you, RTs. God bless every one of you. Everyone's too embarrassed to say it. Your mask stinks really bad. Get some Maskbrite at Maskbrite.com or Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy. To Ray Troutman, Veronica Young, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, and Mona Swearingen. And thank you to my other level Patreon supporters, as well as my YouTube members.